Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy grace. O God, make speed to save us. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the
A reading from the book of Micah. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. Peoples shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines, under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken, for all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory be 
from the Gospel according to John. On that day you will ask nothing of me. Very truly, I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day you will ask in my name. I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, Again, I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. The word of the Lord.
I believe in God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Take not thy holy 
Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, thou hast made us in thine own image and redeemed us through Jesus thy Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish thy purposes on earth. That in thy good time, all nations and races may serve thee in harmony around thy heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, kindle, we beseech thee, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with thy wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy dominion may increase, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work, or watch, or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. Oh, good evening and welcome and welcome to those of you gathered here and welcome to all of you streaming us from afar and welcome to this even song for peace. It is so good for all of us to settle down to the pace of peace. In your order of service, if you have one, perhaps when you can turn to it later when you're at home, you'll notice on page three where Ned R. Maestro and Father Justin, our theologian in residence, have written about the service that we are all participating. I want to begin by just uh, uh, giving a holy hearted thanks to Ned, who, as many of you know, served for 21 years and is uh, at the cathedral, American Cathedral in Paris and is the emeritus uh, director of music there, music minister. Uh, the spirit is at work in Ned at all times, but particularly uh, with the war in Europe, and he has been mightily moved because it is so much more real to Ned having lived uh, close to these battle lines. And the Spirit has been at work at Ned and uh, working, of course, with our own Father Justin, who has his own holiness and his own gift together to begin to craft what is we all need for our souls, which is to be in prayer and to be in the beauty of holiness as uh, the war rages in that area of Europe. There is no doubt in any of our hearts or any of our minds that 
uh, what the choir is offering us tonight is an offering that transcends just what we're doing here, and I'm grateful, as we all are, to the choir for the work they put into making this sound stir the holiness in our own hearts. I am also reminded of previous wars in Europe where Anglican chant and even song, as it is known, uh, has been sung throughout the raging of wars for generations and generations and generations and centuries, always holding our Lord's Prayer before us, even when things seem so chaotic and out of control. The offering that we're about to bring up tonight is uh, these monies will go to the Episcopal Relief and Development, who is working with churches in the Anglican Communion and churches throughout the world to bring relief to all those who are suffering from the current war. As so many of you know, uh, refugees are fleeing. Many of you saw the map that was in the New York Times and saw the refugees in the countries surrounding Ukraine. These monies will go there uh, to churches, uh, to people on the ground in places to help real people in real need. And I'm grateful to everybody who makes such an offering. Uh, after we are done this evening, I invite you all to the library for a reception. Let us gather uh, to, uh, to uh, have something of a uh, time together because in times of difficulty, there's nothing better than to gather together. I'm grateful to Beth Ralston and to James and Emily Morgan for their labors in putting this on. I'm grateful to all of you who are joining us here and all of you are streaming, and I'm grateful for your prayers. For the world is in great need of prayers right now. Now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
We pray for peace and the resolution of hostilities in the world, especially in Ukraine. God of peace and justice. We pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom thou hast made. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.